Mind has no gender. So, this is a philosophy that was put into place by a woman named, my board's over there, um, Mary Wollstonecraft. She lived from 1759 to 1797, dying at the young age of 38. I'm not sure if that was uh, a young age back then. Um, this is a political philosophy coming at it from the approach of the feminist. And one piece of information that supports this philosophy is the fact that John Locke said that all knowledge is gained through experience and education. He doesn't think that you can acquire knowledge any other way besides what you experience and what you're taught. All right. You know, Mary obviously agrees, which is what has supported her philosophy, right? Now, as far as like what she's used to actually explain why she thinks the mind has no gender, I'm not too sure. And I know that in philosophy, that line you hear, uh, what is it? To think is to be. That's one of them. That's usually the very... It, like, that's the summary sentence of a whole line of thought that you actually haven't gone through quite yet, right? So, let's, let's try to make the argument for why the mind has no gender. So, the first argument I'm, that comes to mind is that... <clears throat> well, I guess, I guess the first question you have to ask yourself is... How do you learn, right? Because if there's any type of knowledge that you acquire after you're born, or I'm sorry, prior to being born, like knowledge that you just have right out the gate, then that does blow this theory completely out of the water, I think, at least. Because, I mean, if you acknowledge that we're born with certain knowledge, how could you then say that the mind has no gender, how would you know? Unless you know specifically what knowledge we're born with, right? So in order to adopt this philosophy, I guess you have to also accept that you do not learn through anything other than experience and education. All right, um, this is where it starts to get a little dark. Some of you may already know why. If not, we'll get there together. Um, now I'm going to go into some of my questions, right? We're, th this is a very short philosophy. I mean, it was like half a page in the book. I mean, it was a whole page, but like the text was like half a page, right? Um, so there's really not a whole lot to explain to you just from what I've gotten. But that was, from what I understand, that's the general idea, right? That the mind has no gender. Now let's ask questions. The first question I have written is, is all knowledge gained through experience and education, I would argue that it's not, personally, because you don't have to teach a baby to scream, right? Like when a baby's born, that's the first thing it does, is it yells, it screams, right? Like there's obviously that, like it, that's a behavioral action, right? That's not the heart beating. That's not something that you don't think about. You think about screaming and the baby knows to scream when they're born. That would seem to me at least, or that, that would at least make it seem that you are in fact born with certain knowledge. Just that alone. And I'm sure there's more examples. I can't think of any others off the top of my head. Um, the next question is, are there gender roles, right? So to me, obviously, um, I don't agree with this philosophy because <clears throat> I believe you are born with knowledge. And I think if you're born with knowledge, I'm not saying you're born like Einstein. <laughs> I'm just saying that you have some knowledge within your mind when you're born. You are unique, right? That's what I'm saying. Um, but to believe that you only can acquire knowledge through experience and through education would also point towards you not being special, right? Like you're just this piece of Play-Doh that we can manipulate and form into any shape we want, right? 
You're, you're, you can be anything, but that is precisely why you're not special. You're not different. You're not unique. You're just like everyone else. It could be positive and it could be negative, right? Because you can take it positive like, well, if I'm just like this guy and he did it, well, I, I can do it, right? So, I mean, I, I can see the positive angle, but there's certainly the negative angle, right? Like, well, if we can all do this stuff, then what's special about me? Why am I special, right? Now, I don't have a lot of knowledge about what was going on in history back then, um, but you also have to keep in mind that she didn't have the context of 2023. The mind has no gender is obviously a very strong philosophy at the time of this recording in 2023, right? It's a very strong philosophy. It's almost, uh, if you're, if you challenge it in the wrong place, you'll be crucified, right? So to me, I think it's a rather dark philosophy to say that you're not unique and that you're not special, right? Um, are there gender roles? So are there gender roles? I guess let's look at what that means. So what is a gender role? I would assume that that is the role that your gender is best suited for, right? So any job that is best suited for you based on what we know about your gender. So women are better at X, men are better at Y, right? So I do think that there are differences between men and women. And I do think that because of those differences, there's jobs suited better uh, for a woman and there's jobs suited better for a man, generally speaking, and the exception does not disprove the rule, right? So just because we, we acknowledge that there are exceptions and there are people that won't fall within those general guidelines, we know that generally speaking, they are true. And so I would say, yes, there are gender roles. Since there are, there is a difference in gender, that would also mean that there is a difference. I mean, that, that we would be better at different things, right? I mean, isn't that just common sense? Like we would just be better at different things. Now understand, I, I am not trying to be hateful at all towards anyone that may not appreciate this video. Um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to remain extremely neutral. I'm not, I'm trying not to upset one side or the other. I'm pretty apolitical. I don't um, really, call, I don't call myself a Republican. I don't call myself a Democrat. I don't call myself anything. I just, yeah, I'm me, all right? But I do think that there are gender roles. Um, now, why is that wrong? Why is it wrong for there to be gender roles? This is what I really want us to focus on. Why is it wrong? You know, like it, you say gender roles and it's almost like instantly it, it, everyone just assumes that you're wrong, right? Like that, that it, and not wrong in the sense of incorrect, but wrong morally, like that you're a bad person for acknowledging that there's difference in gender. I, I don't think so. You know, I don't think you're bad. But what does it mean? Why? Why is it that? Let, let's, let's not sit here and ask the question and then never answer it. Let's actually ask it. Like, like, why would it be bad for gender roles to exist? Well, for one, it limits you, right? I mean, if you're a woman, now you're limited to roles that are acceptable to women. And if you're a man, you're limited to roles that are acceptable to men, right? I mean, you're, you're limited. You're limited. That's the number one downside, in my opinion. The next downside would be, let's let's think about this, gender roles, right? What's so bad about gender roles? Um, uh, perhaps we incur so this this point isn't to say that there isn't a difference in gender. It's just that we're not accurately identifying what women would be best suited for and what men would be best suited for, right? And so we give jobs to women that men would be best suited for. And we give jobs to men that women would be best suited for, right? So you got these two 
points. And these are the only two I can think of. I can't really think of anything else, personally. I'm sure other people will be able to think of other things. But um, what could potentially go wrong? So, I mean, we asked a fair question on one side. Well, let's ask the question from the other side. What could go wrong, right? Like, what could go wrong with the removal of gender roles? Well, if, if we're to accept that there are differences in gender, and if you really oppose what I'm saying, at the very least, recognize that this is what a lot of people see right at the very least just i'm not saying to agree with me i'm just saying recognize that this is what a lot of people see a lot of people think that it, you know i won't speak for a lot of people i'll speak for me um i think that if we try to eliminate the difference in gender i mean first and foremost i already kind of hinted at it earlier but the removal of uniqueness that there's nothing special about you that you are a blank slate that's what the military does to us you know like that that's they try to remove your individuality now you could argue that <clears throat> you're not removing uniqueness you're adding to it because this isn't you know i mean technically this is the addition of an infinite amount of genders, right? Now, I would argue that it's impossible for there to be an infinite amount of genders because if we agree that there is a spectrum, that means that you acknowledge that there is one end and then there's another end. There's man, there's woman, there's everything in between, but it ends at woman and it ends at man. It's not infinite. So, um, I also think that whenever... a like let's let's take a woman for example. A, a woman thinks that she's a man, so she never learns. She never pays too much attention to her mother nurturing the other children. Um, she becomes an adult, can't even you know make scrambled eggs. I'm not saying that that's what women are good for. That women are just good for cleaning and cooking and all the the stereotypical stuff. I, I'm saying that. Everything that a woman would be suited for isn't going to be taught in a society that doesn't believe there's a difference in gender. Same thing with men. Men, men are not going to be men. I mean, they're, they're not going to have the same old values that we once had. <clears throat> and they're also not going to have some of the skills. You're not going to be able to trust your men in society to fix the broken car, to do, you know, fix the things around the house, to, you know, go out and confront that threat in the middle of the night that's entered the house. Um, not gonna be super ambitious in my opinion, because if you're not raised as a man and you never become a man, you never, you never take it upon yourself to learn what that means and then become a man, then your men are going to grow cowardly. Your men are going to grow insecure. Um, and insecure men, it, obviously, I'm not the first one to say this. I'm sure you've heard it from others. But the most dangerous man is an insecure one. Because if you're a strong man, like let's say that you're six foot three, you know, you're going and training jujitsu, Muay Thai, kickboxing, you know, you're lifting the weights, you're making good money, you're working a really hard at a good job. You know, you're killing it, you're doing your thing. You're not gonna feel the need to abuse said power because you're used to it. You've had it. You know what that's like. You don't need to abuse it. It's only the insecure man that's never tasted that that feels the need to abuse it in the very few times that they gain the opportunity to do so, right? So, <clears throat> in conclusion, <clears throat> is all knowledge gained through experience and education? Personally, I would say no. 
I think that you're born with some basic knowledge. And in my opinion, and acknowledging that that's all it is, <laughs> in my opinion, if you acknowledge that there's difference in gender, or, excuse me, if you acknowledge that you're born with knowledge of any type when you're born, then you can't also subscribe to this philosophy. Now you can, of course, do whatever you want, but you can't do that and then keep your intellectual consistency. You're not honest. You're not being truthful. You can lie. You can say whatever you want. You can make whatever noises with this thing right here that you want. But truth is truth. And it's it's gonna everyone's gonna know what the truth is. I feel that personally, this is a personal belief. Um, I, I think we all have truth detectors inside of us. I feel like we know when someone's lying to us deep down somewhere inside of us. We have that that thing inside of us that recognizes dishonesty. I think that that may change. I don't know, but that's what I think. So, anyways, this is what I think. What do you think?